Hi, welcome back. In our last video, we created an item that our enemies drop when our players defeat them. And that item for me is a coin. Yours might be something different, but whenever our player touches one of those items, they collect it and we have a, a global variable that keeps track of how many they've collected. In today's video, we're gonna create a system so that an enemy can drop different types of items, or maybe there's just a certain percentage chance of an item dropping when that enemy is defeated. And to do this, we're gonna to have to make an instance variable. So let's choose an enemy. Let's, uh, I'm gonna do it on this beetle enemy. That's my enemy number one. Choose an enemy and let's give it an instance variable. I'm gonna call this instance variable item drop. It's gonna be the variable that controls which item drops when this enemy is defeated. It's gonna be a number and the initial value zero. Click okay. Now let's go over to our event sheet. In our core event sheet, we have these three events that we made in our last video. Whenever an enemy is destroyed, they spawn a coin. Let's delete this spawn a coin part. We'll add it back in later, but for now, I'm gonna delete it because I'm gonna put something else there instead. I'm gonna say when they're destroyed, I'm gonna add an action. I'm gonna to go to my enemy and I'm gonna find set value underneath the instance variable section. I'm gonna set the value of the item drop. And the value is going to be the word choose. Oops. And then in parentheses, a one, a comma, a two, and then a closed parentheses. Let me explain what that means. Choose means the construct will pick one of the numbers that are in the parentheses behind it. It's kind of like random, except this one won't pick any numbers in between. This will just pick either a one or a two, and I could add other numbers in there too. I could add a five or a 30, and it'll only pick a one, a two, a five, or a 30. So it's almost like a lottery thing. It just kind of picks random numbers from the selection that you give it in the parentheses behind. But let's just start with a one or a two. That way there's a 50% chance of one coming up and a 50% chance of a two coming up. Now the next step is something we haven't talked about before. We're gonna add what's called a sub event. And to do that, you right click on the left side of your event. I'm gonna to go to add and then you'll find add sub event. Click on that. This sub event is gonna be for our enemy one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare an instance variable. I wanna to check to see which item drop number came up. So if item drop is equal to one, then I can make it do something. I can add an action here. Let's add another sub event. Right click up here on the top event, add sub event, enemy one, compare instance variable, item drop equal to two. Now notice how these events are indented underneath our main event. That's called a sub event. The advantage of a sub event is that it all kind of happens as one cohesive unit. When this enemy is destroyed, our enemy selects a random number, a one or a two. And if a one comes up, we can make something happen. If a two comes up, we can make something happen. If these were not sub events, if these were just separate events, it wouldn't work because our enemy's already been destroyed and their instance variable has been lost, right? So by adding sub events, we can have all this stuff happen very quickly as one cohesive group, almost simultaneously. So sub events are really useful for something like this. If we have like a random number chosen and we wanna make sure that whatever number comes up has some kind of action that happens at almost the same time, use sub events. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decide, okay, when a one comes up, let's make a coin drop. And when a two comes up, let's make maybe nothing drops. So that way only coins come out 50% of the time. So let's add an action for item drop equals to one. And we'll go to our enemy one. We'll spawn another object. And we'll spawn a coin. Now remember, I would recommend making sure that this is coming out on the right layer. Type in a quotation mark, find the layer that you want to put it on. We're putting everything on layer zero. Click done. Now item drop two, we can leave blank for now. If we leave a blank, nothing will happen when we defeat that enemy uh, half of the time. Defeat the first one, nothing comes out. Defeat the second one, a coin drops. So I'm at 50% drop rate for a coin. Third one, a coin comes out. Fourth one, nothing comes out. 
You can control the percentage of time that a coin comes out by just changing these numbers. So for example, say you want coins to come out two thirds of the time, and maybe one third of the time you want nothing to happen. You can add another one in here. You can have more than one of the same number in here. So for example, now in this two out of three times, it'll pick a one and a coin will drop. One third of the time, it'll pick a two and nothing will come out. Or you could do three ones. Now, three quarters of the time a coin drops, one quarter of the time a coin doesn't drop. So you can really kind of fine tune the likelihood that an item will drop using this choose system. Now let's do the same thing for the other two enemy events. I'll let you do that on your own. If you get lost, just uh, watch what we did for the first enemy and do it again for the second enemy. Here's a hint, make sure you give that second enemy the item drop instance variable before you start making your events. Great. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.